Praise the Lord. We bring you greetings from the Resurrected Church. We have a word from the Lord for you on today. We want to tell you as you tune in that we hope that you are blessed by the word. That it says something for your soul. That it's an encouragement as you listen. And we just want to give you what the Lord has given us for today for the reading of the word. And to just be an encouragement to take you throughout the work week. To let you know that God is here listening and desire to be in your lives. If he's not, if you have not committed to him yet, then listen for his voice. Give him an opportunity and give the, be that person that is willing to serve God in fullness and truth and in sincerity because he just wants a willing vessel. He gave his life so that we may have life. And on today, I just want you to hear his word, hear his voice, and as he speaks, I desire to speak to you and give you what he's given me for today. I'll be coming to you from 1 Samuel, going through a little bit on chapter 1, but my main verse will be chapter 3. And the subject that I have for you today is the master is calling you. We each have a call on our lives from God. And we have to hear his voice to know what that call is. We can't just go by what we've always been told by people. But it comes a time when you must seek God. Hear what he desires of you. And obey the call. I begin to be beginning with 1 Samuel 1. And we know that this tells us the story. Or we learn the history of a man named Elkanah. He had two wives, Hannah and Penina. And it reads, Now there was a certain man of Ramoth, Ramothim Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. <clears throat> Now we know that Hannah and Penina were his wives. Penina had children, <clears throat> but Hannah had none, and this was a burden to her because she was not able to give Elkanah children. It burned her so to where she just didn't know what to do. And Elkanah saw the grief in her and tried to encourage her when, when he gave his offerings, he gave her more than he gave Penina, but that wasn't enough. She felt like she was left out because she wasn't, she didn't have a child to give to her husband. So yearly when they went to Shiloh, where the Ark of the Covenant was, to worship and to give sacrifice unto the Lord, as time went on, Hannah being grieved because she could not bear children, she went to God. Now, according to the tradition, when the children of Israel would have a petition or anything they wanted from God, they would go to the priest. <coughs> there was a pointing over them during this time, and Eli was the priest that sat at Shiloh where the children Where the children of Israel would come to worship, so he would be the he was the priest that they would come to, and give their petition or their prayer, whatever they needed. They would talk to Eli about it, and he would go to God for them. But Hannah, knowing in her heart that her desire, the thing that she craved, was greater than Eli, she knew that the burden that she had, Eli couldn't answer it. So she went past him when they went to Shiloh to worship. 
everybody was eating and drinking, but Hannah went to worship the Lord in her own secret time. She went to God. And in her doing so, Eli saw she was praying, but he thought that she was drunk. But she told him, no, I'm not drunk. I'm going, I'm taking my petition to God because I know he is the only one that can answer me. So after Eli knew what Hannah was doing, he agreed with her in prayer. The word says if you have any one or two touching in prayer, that in agreement in prayer, that is God will answer so Eli agreed with Aunt Hannah in the prayer that she prayed that she would bear a child. And as time went on, she was able to bear a son. And she made a vow that if God gave her a child, she would lend him back to God for as long as he lived. She named him Samuel. And after he was born, she waited until he was weaned. And then they returned to Shiloh. And when they returned, she told Elkanah, she told Eli, I'm sorry. Um, First Samuel 2. And 12 reads, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in seething with the flesh hook of three, seething, of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it in the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in, in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Now Eli's sons were raised as priests behind him. So they were supposed to follow the footsteps of their father. But they chose to follow the order of Belial, which was the devil. They did things in, that were ungodly, unseemly before the children of Israel. And it was supposed to be that each time an offering was given to the priest, that the flesh would be cooked, and then what was taken out first would be for the priest. But the sons of Eli didn't allow the food to be finished cooking. They would take it out and give it to, well, take it for themselves before it was done, just doing things that they know was wrong just because they felt they could. And it says in 50, verse 15, Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desire, then he will answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. They loved to do the offering of the Lord, but at the end of the day, his two sons, the two that knew what was right, chose to do the opposite of it. And nothing was done to them in this. Eli didn't correct them. Eli just allowed his children to do whatever. They slept with women. They did everything that they knew was ungodly before the children of Israel. So this, later on, as you read in the story, you learn that the children of Israel desire a king because they knew that Eli's sons could not take his place, and as well as Samuel, they chose a king because of what they saw other people doing. 18 reads, But Samuel ministered before the Lord being a child, girded with a linen ephah. Moreover, his mother made him a linen, a linen coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the long which she is lent, which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. 
And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. And we learn that because, because Hannah was willing to sacrifice her first child and give it back to the Lord just to have a child. God blessed her with more children. And she was obedient and they continued to come and do the yearly sacrifice to give unto the Lord. And now we know that Eli rebuked his sons and he let them know, he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for there is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. In other words, you doing these things before the people of God, before the children of God, and you're supposed to be leaders, but you're causing them to go astray from the will of God. You're doing things that they feel like if you can get away with it, I can get away with it. So they're doing the same, they're trying to follow the same ways that you know are wrong. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the children and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Now this is where the message comes in, where the master is calling you. We know that Samuel was born because of the prayer his mother prayed to have a child. And we know that once he was born, she weaned him and she took him back to Shiloh so that Eli could raise him in God's house to be a servant for God. Now Eli, allowed things to go on that he knew was out of the will of God, but he didn't stop it being the priest that he was before God. He allowed his children, most of all, to be out of order. And the word tells us that the man is the head and he should train his children up in the way that they should go, be an example to them. But if he's not stopping it and allowing it to go on, then the children will do more and worse things because they feel they can get away with it. So, beginning at verse 27, chapter 2. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephah before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honors thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I, had, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house, and thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give to Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. And the man of, of thine whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, to grieve thine heart, and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. 
and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into, the, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. And we begin with the call of the Lord. We know that in the beginning, God called on different men because there was a work to be done, and there's work to be done today. So that's why I asked the question, do you hear the master calling you? He is calling for someone that will obey him, that will do his will and obey his voice and do the work that's needed in this land today. There are souls that are dying. There are people that need to know who God is. The generations that are before us now have a mind to that if it doesn't go their way in the, in the desires that they see fit, then they don't want to obey it. They don't want to do it. But when the times get hard or things don't go our way or it's just frustrating, then we turn to God. But he wants you when you're willing and able to work and do his will and obey the call that he has for your life. Some of the people that he called in the beginning, Abraham. We know that Abraham, when he did have a child of his old age, he heard the voice of God when God told him, if, if you obey me, I want to see how much you will obey me and what your faith is. So sacrifice your son. And Abraham went to, in obedience, went to sacrifice his son. But God had a ram in the bush for him, but it was his obedience to the call. He heard the voice of God and answered the call to go and be obedient. And he was chosen to be the seed that would be multiplied in this earth that we should be an inheritance to God through. Moses heard the call at the burning fiery bush when God called him to go back to Egypt to rescue his children from Pharaoh. And you have different people at different times in life that when they begin to hear the voice of God, they obey the call. You have Paul, you have Peter, when fishing, they, God began to call them to be his disciples. They answered the call. In verse 3, chapter 3 reads, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. There was no one to give them a prophetic word from God to say what thus, and thus says the Lord at this time. It was only through Eli that they could hear what God desired from them. So there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now Eli dwelt in Shiloh, where the ark of the covenant was. And he was teaching Samuel the ways of the order of the priest. He began to train him up how to live for God and what to do. And when you're a babe coming into Christ, you need leaders. We need leaders that teach can teach you coming in as a babe how to live for God, how to commit to God, how to answer his voice and go to him. But they need to teach you so that when you establish that relationship, they can let you go not continue to hold on to you and teach you their ways because you need to have an established relationship with God for yourself. So it comes a time when we need the leaders in a place to help us in that place so we can grow and learn and understand who God is and how to discern and hear his voice and obey his will, just how to live a life before him. That's what leaders are here for, to lead and guide us. But it, in that, learn how to have a relationship with God for yourself. Stay in your word. Stay on your knees. 
Stay in prayer and fasting, seeking God, because he desires to have a relationship with each individual, not just those that he has called to lead, but he wants to use you individually as well. In verse 4, the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran into Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So basically Samuel was just doing as he was told. He was being trained up in the priesthood, and he was doing what Eli taught him because his, he was obedient to his mother's desire to be lent to God and to do the will of God. But he had to be taught what that will was, and Eli began to teach him according to what he was accustomed to, according to what God had given him. And again, verse 7, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. And it took three times for, e for God to call Samuel, for Eli to realize that it was God. And that should say something in that because Eli being a servant of God should have known when Samuel called to him the very first time and came and said, you called me, he should have known then, it must be God calling you because I didn't. If you're hearing a call and you don't know the voice of it, this must be God. But Eli, being in the place he was and allowing his children to do the things that they had done, had fell out of the will of God basically because he didn't obey God in the fullness. You allowed your children to continue and sin when you knew it was wrong. So he allowed them to do things out of the will of God. And it caused him to lose the, his ear and, and spiritual ear in hearing what God was when God was calling Samuel. So in the third time he had he realized, well, this must be God calling him. So when he it reads, it must not skip over. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord. For that servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, and at which both the ears of everyone that hear it, it shall tingle. In that day, I'll perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of, of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offerings forever. So God was telling Eli, Samuel, I'm sorry. He was telling Samuel, I'm giving you a word. This is, I've told Eli, I've warned him. He didn't obey. He allowed his children to continue in sin. So I'm calling you as my servant. And I want you to obey what I give you. The words that I speak, I don't want them, they will not return unto me void. He tells us that his word won't return unto him void. So the words that I speak to you, Samuel, I want you to obey this, my voice because this is what is about to take place. 
And Samuel lay until the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more so, more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Now as the Lord began to call Samuel, Samuel didn't read, read, he didn't know that it was the voice of God in the beginning. But when he obeyed and went back and said, Here am I, thy servant here, God began to speak to him. And this is something that you, I noticed that in reading this, Eli and Samuel were in the same house, dwelling in the in the ark of the, in the in Shiloh in the Lord's house. And Eli didn't even hear each time that God began to call Samuel. You would think he would have heard as well when God was calling Samuel, but his ears were had closed up to the voice of God because he allowed sin to creep in. He allowed the things of the world to take over and in that he gave up what was important and God needed someone to obey him. So he ended up telling Samuel to go back and listen to it and when he speaks you answer and Samuel did and in doing so God gave him instruction of what was about to take place in Eli's house. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even unto Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now in this, we we read that Eli was teaching him to be accustomed to in the order of the, what he was accustomed to, and that was the priesthood. But God was calling Samuel to be something else. He didn't want him to follow the order of the priest. In reading this, we just read that the whole Israel knew that God was calling Samuel to be a prophet of the Lord. And Samuel was the first prophet that we read of that we know we know Moses was used as a prophet, but at the end we to be given the name prophet, we read Samuel was the first person to be called a prophet in the Bible. And there were many others that God called upon. Some for just a season until they left this old sinful world, but they obeyed. And God began to show Samuel what it was he was calling him to do and did not allow none of the words he spoke to fall to the ground. And he obeyed, he had obeyed Eli as far as, as he could take him. But then the master began to call and hearing his call is what makes the difference. It's good to have leaders that can teach you the way of the Lord, but keep your ears open so that you can hear the Father. That's the most important thing. We need to be able to hear the voice of God, not just being obedient to what leaders give us to do, the ministers, the teachers. But God told us in his word, Ephesians 4, 11 says that he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So we have to listen because I might have a leader that's over me that may be a minister over me or evangelist over me or whatever the call that God has given them. But if I seek God, obey his voice, do his will, seek his desires and what to see what it is that he desires for my life, 
There's no telling what my call could be for him. I just have to obey the voice of God and listen for it. It's a, we have to pray that he opens our spiritual ears, that our understanding is open to his word and to his voice. And our understanding that we'll hear and discern his voice and know when he speaks. So we'll obey. So listen for the call. And after you hear it, obey the call. Because you have to be willing and obedient to, in order to eat the good of the land. And it's, the land is plenteous. It's great with things that God can give you, spiritual soul and natural soul. But at the end of the day, stand still and hear his voice. Hear the call, what he desires for your life, and walk in submission and obedience to it. We um even Paul thinking that he was doing right by following the letter, that he was taught, thought he, he was on the right call. But on his way to Damascus, he found out he heard the wrong voice and answered the wrong call because he was going about slaying the children of Israel because he thought that the way that they was following was wrong, but it was according to what he was taught by man. But God knocked him down off his beast. And he had no other choice but to listen to the voice of God. And it shouldn't be that he, you should have to be in an, an afflicted or some type of circumstance come upon you for you to hear and obey the voice of God. But it should be you willing to do it from your own heart and mind anyway. Because he wakes us up every day. He gives us life, health, and strength. And we are surrounded by people we love, we have jobs, we have everything that we need. But when will we desire to hear the voice and obey the spiritual part that he desires for us? Because this temporal body, is it won't last forever. So we need to make it where we're setting up to have eternal life and have a life with him more abundantly in the heavenly. And that's what our call should be, to hear what he desires and to walk in obedience and submission to the call that he's given us so we can hear him and obey him and walk in all that he desires for our lives. I thank him for just, I answered the call one day. He gave me a mind to come higher, to come to another place and another level in him. And I had to hear and discern that voice to know that it was him. And you know when God is calling, you're disturbing, you're asleep, you can't sleep, your spirit is bothered, you're being tormented sometimes by things that don't make sense. And, it's, and especially if you're already confessing them. But if you haven't gone to that next place in him and he's trying to get your attention to do that, he has his ways, but make it easy. Seek him. Stay in your word. Fast. Pray. Seek his face continuously so that you may hear his voice and answer the call. Do you hear the master calling you is the question. And if you hear it, walk in obedience to it. Tell him you understand and that you, let him know you understand and by letting him know you understand you are walk in obedience to it. That's your way of letting him know that you understand it and you hear his voice. He desires to use those who will let him. And I want to be one of those vessels. And I'm sure you do as well. But humble down. Give up your ways so that we can learn more of his ways and walk in obedience to his will. I just thank him for the word on today. I thank him for his grace, his mercy, his peace, and his love. And I ask him that he, that he just keeps us throughout this week. Give us strength to go on our jobs, our daily occupations, to be a mother, father to our children, our siblings, whatever we need to be to be that light in that city that sits up on a hill. We give us the strength and the mind of obedience to do that and continue to seek him to obey his call. I thank him for the word on today. I thank him for you tuning in and just your listening ear to hear what the Spirit is saying on today. We love you we got, and God bless you. And we thank you for just giving us the opportunity to minister into your souls on today. And we at the Resurrected Church, we believe in don't just take our word for it, but read the word of God for yourself. The word is necessary for life. It's strength to our souls. 
And we need it daily and continuously to stand in these last and evil days. When the devil came to try to God through after his fast, he used the word against the devil, and the devil fled. So stay in your word so you'll have something to stand in. You'll have something to fight with when the enemy comes against you. You'll have some your resource as a tool for strength and encouragement when you need it. When enemy is facing you on every hand you'll have something to give you strength to go through we just love you again and god bless you and we hope you tune in again as we bring you the word thank you and amen